We're here at the HFMA Annual Conference in Las Vegas, and we're excited to be here talking with Kim Charland from MRO. How are you doing, Kim? I'm good, John. How are you doing? It's a good. Yeah, I'm excited to, to talk with you. So MRO, you know, is known for release of information, for ROI, and really in the HIM world, right? How do you do the release of information? And you guys really just take it over for them, which is awesome. But what's interesting is that you actually see an opportunity in the business office because business offices are getting more requests for information as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I'd love to. So you're absolutely right. Uh, nowadays, with all of the requests from payers to support medical in the Necessity and services that are provided before um, they're going to pay for it, basically. What has been happening is the billers and the collectors are oftentimes uh, proactively sending medical record information because they know that the payer is either going to request it, it could be a service that's questioned often, so they will actually kind of self-request and fulfill that request for medical information. Then, of course, payers may adi uh, request additional information um, once the bill has been sent to further clarify, you know, charges or services provided. So we're finding that it's really impacting the workflow and the efficiency of billers and collectors who really should be focusing their time on billing and collecting <laughs> and not processing, you know, patient information, which is typically a function and a special specialty that the Health Information Management Department does. So what we've done is, based upon requests from our current customers, we've created this new workflow, which is really focusing in on those requests that are in the central business office. And our processing time is within 24 hours. Um, so typically the uh, business office will identify the request and, and submit that. We then at MRO will take that request, find the medical record documentation, um, pull that, do our QA, and then it all gets sent to our National Service Center, which is located in Pennsylvania, for delivery. And then we set up by payer the preferred method of delivery that they want, and then we just process and, and submit it on. And through all that process, through our MRO, our ROI online platform, um, and then for Epic, we actually have an integration with Epic, but we then track all of that information. So you can um, go back and do data analytics basically on what your payers are requesting, how often, um, how many pages they're requesting. So you can actually look to see um, what services they might be targeting for audit or review, how much is it costing you. You could go back and potentially renegotiate with those payers um, either for, um, you know, costs associated with requesting, you know, or re-requests that might happen. Those happen a lot, and those are easy for us to resend. There's also, because the business office and uh, collector, collectors are oftentimes not adequately trained um, in protected health information and what it takes to really release that, they're sometimes over-releasing. So we often hear, well, I just send the entire record because it's easier than just the pieces that might be needed. So there you're, you're getting into the HIPAA issues of minimum necessary, We've also heard stories about packages being returned um, when paper records have been sent that are damaged and open. So there's definitely the compliance risk of breach. So with outsourcing it to us or doing some type of shared model even, we can do that. It allows us to really ensure that the right information is sent timely so that you're we're not slowing down the, the, the cycle for billing, um, and then the trackability um, and, the, and the efficiency, basically. Well, and it seems like that's really the case. Because I mean, if, if I'm a uh, business office manager, you know, in charge of this, I'm like, well, we've done it like this forever. Why should I invest? But I, I think the answer is, you know, you kind of gave was compliance is an issue, right? So there's legal risk there by not being compliant with HIPAA. And then also, I, you know, I love the idea of having the analytics available that you could renegotiate different contracts or different payment models based on the requests that they're doing. Uh, is that the main business model? and justification for why they should use someone like MRO rather than just, you know, the status quo is the enemy of many organizations, right? Correct. And, you know, the, the guidelines 
you know, and the issues related to that protected health information is so important. And the other importance, too, is the efficiency in that business office for processing mm -hmm. those claims and getting them out the door. So you really, you know, rather than, you know, if you're a large central business office and you have 100 employees, you know, rather than have all of those employees processing things, maybe doing it differently, really look at streamlining, and that's been a theme here at conference, you know, streamlining efficiencies, making sure that the trained experts are doing what they should be doing, it really frees up those billers and collectors to do their job, um, especially from the collecting side nowadays with um, the with the Accountable Care Act, we're finding that there's higher deductibles. So the collectors are really spending a lot more time on that collecting side, which they should be. And again, from the billing side, mm -hmm. making sure that we're billing timely. So right. it kind of ties all that together. Yeah, so it frees up the billers to be able to do that. So we're here at the HFMA Annual Conference in Vegas. So what are some of the trends, insights, uh, things you're hearing on the street from the, the sessions you've been at or the attendees? Well, it has been a great conference, fantastic tracks, it always is. Um, so what I've been seeing is really the process improvement efficiency is huge here, um, especially within the revenue cycle. So this is where you know our product actually ties into that quite nicely. Um, and one other aspect of that that I've been seeing for the trend, of course, is from the patient experience perspective. Um, a lot going on here about, you know, how patients are treated, access to services, and then that experience with them. So one thing to keep in mind, even from the service of release of information, um, there is a patient uh, portion of that of service so you want your patients to have a good experience you you are, I'm an HIM professional by trade and um, you know we've been hearing a lot from patients who are having trouble getting their medical records so if you're you know if you have a severe illness if your child is sick it's t it's important that you get that information timely so by having you know we have actually a whole dedicated team at our national resource center just dedicated to answering questions so if patients have questions about the status of their records or anything they call that number and we take care of it immediately so it adds to that patient experience as well as well as that efficiency so those are some of the theme you know That's what i've been great. seeing here yeah, that's great. I mean, I think patient experience is a topic that applies in so many aspects and getting access to records is one where, you know, many have a bad experience. So thanks for sharing. Thanks everyone for watching. Uh, you can find out more great HIM and health IT content at healthcarescene.com.